Hello, welcome to Spotlight and Contemporary Art with Barbara and Shara. Today we're featuring the Anna Mara Gallery and the Jewish Ghetto Neighborhood. Shara, what a beautiful late afternoon light, isn't it? It's, uh, it was such a warm light, typical for the autumn period in Rome. And we are actually in what um, the Romans uh, refer to as a Jewish ghetto, which is a Jewish quarter of uh, the historical Jewish quarter of the city of Rome. And uh, just in front of us, we have the synagogue. Uh, that is actually the landmark of this area, obviously. And uh, we're surrounded uh, not only by uh, ancient um, monuments, but also um, by restaurants, obviously, because this is an area where a lot of tourists and Romans come to eat and, and taste the typical Roman Jewish uh, recipes and, uh, and ingredients. So, um, yeah, let's have a look and go and look and see the Portico di Ottavia. look here and we are the Portico d'Ottavia which was actually a kind of um, an open space with arcades uh, and we still still see references to the fact that there were temples uh, adjacent to this uh, this structure also the church there that you can see in the back uh, adjacent to the Portico d'Ottavia we have the Teatro di Marcello in the back where now you know obviously uh, these structures are used also today for uh, open-air concerts, open-air theater plays. And the nice thing here is the view also towards the Capitol and Hill with obviously uh, the municipality of the city of Rome. So here we are inside um, the Galleria Anna Marra, and this is one of the really most charming galleries in Rome. It's a relatively young gallery. Uh, Anna will now explain to us a little bit better. It's about five years old. But what I always find so exciting about coming to Anna's exhibitions is that here you see works of art that you would not see elsewhere if she didn't show them. She's very courageous, and she has devoted her attention to uh, American artists, to other foreign artists whose work is really quite outside of the expectation of an Italian type of, of, uh, of, of taste. Um, she also does these lovely little catalogs, which are always nice. We pick them up and take them away with us, um, where there's the text of the curator and the brief biography of the artists and so on. So she does a, a really very good job in presentation and documentation. So now we'd like to introduce Anna Marra. Welcome Shara and welcome everybody to my gallery. As you already said, my gallery is uh, active since 7, 8 years actually, always based here in Rome in the historical center of the city. Uh, at the very beginning the activity was much focused on Italian artists, uh, that's because they were actually the one I knew better. Uh, after a couple of years, uh, I had the opportunity, thanks to the collaboration with uh, the advisor Serena Trizzino and the curator Larry Osehimensa, uh, to start a um, program that focuses on international artists, uh, best American actually, or African American. For instance, this show is a show curated by Larry Osei Mensa that put together six African-American artists that want to induce a reflection on the theme of the black identity. Um, every one of those artists obviously declined this uh, issue uh, in a very personal way. Everyone has uh, each own backgrounds. Uh, and here you can find uh, sculpture, paintings, drawings, photographs, a bit of everything.
This is uh, Kentura Davis, who works with portraiture, and her particular uh, approach is to use the rubber stamp um, on which um, uh, she, she creates these drawings, so it's a painting uh, beneath, uh, drawing on the surface. And the phrase that she repeats, because I don't know if you can see well, but she works with the intersection between uh, visual art and the spoken word language. So in a certain sense, thinking about how these different uh, figures may in some way be expressing themselves through uh, the spoken word. This is Nate Lewis, whose work is really quite different, also on the idea of uh, portraiture, if you wish, uh, more about the human body. But if you come close, you'll see that his approach is, is a very interesting uh, combination of different types of techniques. The photographic, which is at the basis of the work, and then if you look closely, you see a kind of collage of different ways of applying pigment or texture or pattern on the surface. And this gives a bit the idea, perhaps, of uh, body painting, um, of, 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 uh, of kind of the pigmentation of body and so on, and also on this very wonderful, um, almost sculptural approach to the male figure, to the human body. So the musculature and uh, the, you know, the, the relationship of the body to the surface and so on. And now we're looking at Kennedy Yanko, who um, we can make some references. I don't know if uh, the audience might be familiar with the um, molded uh, 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 metal sculptures of Chamberlain. Um, there's also been the suggestion of a connection perhaps to Rauschenberg and so on. So we have lots of interesting connections that we can make. But what stands out perhaps is this very almost delicate uh, reference again to the human body, uh, to clothing, to drapery, uh, to the sensuality of the female form, if you wish, using a material, I'll, I'll bang on it now, which you don't really do in a gallery, but listen, right? Which is uh, a, a, a bent metal, but in, done in a way that, uh, that, that, that kind of parallels these wonderful folds. It almost looks as if it's fabric. Um, and then clothing on this uh, painted skin, as it's called. So this drapery that cascades very gently uh, down onto the floor, again, underlining this uh, almost uh, figurative aspect. So if one reads the label, the material that we're looking at, which looks like terracotta, I don't, again, <laughs> my, my tendency is always to come and touch something, which of course we don't do in a gallery, um, but it's actually skin. Uh, presumably we're talking about leather, um, but nevertheless this idea that we have this wonderful contrast between an organic material, um, a uh, you know, tactile material, and then a much more, uh, shall we say, industrial material, which is, the, uh, which, is the, uh, which is the iron, which in this case has eroded uh, to again mimic the idea of a, a terracotta piece. So we're walking out into the courtyard of the gallery. And here again, we have a fantastic uh, piece, uh, again, portrait, which uses, and you have to come close so that you can see, which uses uh, the kind of recycled materials um, of rubber tires. So we're looking at the tires of automobiles or bicycles or, or, or whatever. So the black uh, plastic, which is then woven into braids or uh, perforated to form the jewelry or the facial features. And in fact, the artist makes reference to people who are dear to her, uh, David, Amanda, and Janet. So they're not only um, kind of prototypes, but they're also uh, very, uh, almost, almost, almost portraits. So portraiture is still at the, again, um, at, the, at the basis of the work of David Schraub. Um, we're looking at three pieces. We can start with this one, which I think you have a, a very good sense that he's um, uh, basing himself on the almost a stereotype of 18th and early 19th century portraiture, uh, the elaborate frame, uh, the figure centralized, uh, clothed in a rather elaborate clothing. These are collages. So he combines not only 
uh, uh, um, uh, collage materials, but also painting, to create this very kind of interesting connection between what might be a, a tribal or primitive approach to portraiture and a very sophisticated uh, official kind of portraiture. And if you come here, we continue with this idea. Again, the portrait, the sitter, uh, the black cape, seemingly an aristocratic uh, uh, you know, person uh, set within the oval, which again makes us think of um, American portraits of the 17 and early 1800s. What's also very interesting, not only the uh, details of jewelry and so on, the folded hands, and, 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 uh, and, and, but the eyes. And in all of these portraits, um, we have this kind of idea that the eye is almost the entry into the soul. So we have this wonderful attention paid to the, to the eyes. So here, too, we're thinking about identity. And I think maybe one of the themes that is continuous through the exhibition is how these artists whether they're male or female, where they come from or so on, all think about um, how they're defining their, their identity, if you wish, in a more collective, as we say, the diaspora, right? The, the identity of, of a community. Um, so if we look at this and then we walk over to the opposite side and look at the, there are four uh, photographs in this, uh, in this series. Um, you know, we're seeing the wonderful use of, if you wish, nature, but also the wonderful use of what might be a textile, a very vivid, vibrant textile. Um, the collage aspect gives us also the idea of, 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 you know, of juxtaposing different types of textures and colors and, and, and so on. Um, in what might be, in a certain sense, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of thinking about portraiture. Yes, so again, as we said, maybe that's one of the motifs that does run through the exhibition, thinking about how one views oneself and how one wants to be viewed. Anna, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. I really, really love the show, and I think that the audience will feel the same way. Thank you. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to show the exhibition <laughs> to a much, much bigger audience. And we will stay tuned for the next show at Anna Mara's gallery. Good Thanks. night.